let's go get these uh, traction bars fitted. So that's off the ground now. So as you can see, there's a that six inch coilover has a lot has a lot of travel, which is really cool. So. Looks uh, pretty pretty high now, so that's uh, that's probably the wheels. The wheels are probably off the ground, about two inches. So we'll uh, get this uh, rear tire off. I'll do a time lapse of getting this rear tire off on both sides, and then I've just got to release the leaf pack to um, slide these new brackets in. Apparently. So the new brackets will go around the bottom of there, but I can't get them in because of this. Um, I have no idea what this is for, but it's it's part of the block that sits underneath the leaf pack. I don't know what that piece extruding there is, but anyway, we'll uh, get these off and um, get putting these brackets in. Then we can take it back off the hoist. So another good thing to do, instead of having a uh, tire iron or the original bar that comes with your truck or your ute or whatever, Go out to uh, the super cheap or a, um, a car place and buy the Pacific socket, thin walled socket, to actually fit your wheel nuts. So that way you're not having to use the other one. You can use a um, a breaker bar. I always have a breaker bar in my car. Plus I have the sockets and the uh, the lock nut for my wheels. So that way I'm not using the original bar because they're just they're a real pain in the ass and it's quicker just to use the a socket that's for your wheels it's kept in the back of your truck with your your jack and whatever so and then i use a short little extension as well just to get that breaker bar out past the 37 so i'm not rubbing my fingers along the side of the tire so just another good idea and guys always read your instructions because you may think you know what you're doing most of the times I do know what I'm doing, but there may be just one step that you miss and then you've got to go back three steps that you thought you were ahead and you weren't. So I'm going to read these instructions now and we'll come back to putting these brackets on. So you guys a quick look under the truck. She's pretty dirty and I really, I really need to go under and clean it. But, um, and that's, that's not an oil leak. That's from me changing the oil the other day. So, so that's the, uh, the four link for the BDS. And big DPF. 2.5 rear shocks. So there's plenty of room under the sides of this thing to actually mount like spare batteries and air tanks and I'll give you guys a look at the air tank so that's where I've got the air tank up under there and I think that these are pretty much identical for both sides. Um, there's no nothing in the instructions that says they're left or right, and there's no stamps that say R or L. Um, so go ahead now and start getting these on underneath these blocks. Yeah, well that was pretty straightforward. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. You just have to get an, enough to fit this bracket. See how that block there's loose? Just enough to get that past there. So then you can uh, tighten it up, so, which is handy. I just didn't want to have to take that whole thing apart, so put that in now. We'll uh, get these U-bolts on and get that nipped up. And now, U-bolts. I've just got to go and grab my torque, torque bar and torque all them up. These are all tight again, just got to torque them up too. So we'll go now and I'll get all them torqued up and then we'll go over and do the other side. All right guys, so it says that we've got to remove these two bolts just here. Just these two right there in the uh, fuel tank shield. So we'll go ahead now and I'll um, 
get the sockets for those and we'll uh, get those removed. So. so now we've got the uh, the other bolt pack 961, which has got lots of stuff in it. Um, and then you've got your bracket here. So this bracket says that it sandwiches And then I think we have to drill one, two. Yeah, we have to drill two holes on this side. I think we have to drill all the holes on the other side, but I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get this side done. Okay, so when you remove these bolts on top, I don't know if you can see that, but there's um, those two, the, the style of slide clips with the nut on top. So you need to remove them too, where the old bolts used to go back in. So um, just pull them, pull them out, and then you've got these bolts here, and um, these washers, and these nuts, which will replace these just in here. So I'll go ahead now and get a screwdriver and try and slide them off the the, sh the chassis. So there are those clips that I was talking about. So you need to remove them with the uh, bolt washer nuts. Alright guys, so I've got the uh, the small, I think they're 13mm bolts just uh, just nipped up, they're not tight or anything at the moment but then you've got these bolts here, these really large ones they go in the top up here as you can see I've already got, I've already got one in there, this one's for the other side but um, I've got one in there, I'm just going to nip that one up now tighten him up and then we can go ahead Make sure it's all square before we talk it down um, and mark our other holes that we've got to drill for the um, these other bolts for these ones here so we'll go ahead now and do that so we'll just leave that about there it's like it's just nipped it's still still loose so I don't want to tighten it all the way up until I get these uh, these holes in this bracket squared at the chassis and get these drilled. Otherwise, if I tighten that up right up now and it, it pulls it a bit skew if um, these holes when I go to put the bolts in may not line up. So just don't just leave everything semi loose. Just nip it up so it's just loose. So go ahead now and I'll uh, mark these holes and get these drilled. So. Before you drill any holes or anything. Um, before you start this job, go to uh, go to Super Cheap or an automotive store or any tool store and get yourself one of these. So what it does is it um, it's a center punch, so it'll give you dead center. So you line your holes up. I've got this all clamped up here at the moment, but um, you can basically get it all clamped up the way you want it, and then push this on the chassis rail and it'll give you a center punch. You haven't got to use another hammer or whatever. It's just got a spring inside, so they're super handy. So grab yourself one of them before you're gonna start drilling holes. So we've got two pilot holes drilled in the chassis. Now we're gonna um, step up to a bigger drill bit and then I'll, um, I'll put the, the actual size drill bit on there. Just make it easier to, to get everything out so the drill's not binding up. So. Alright, so now we're going to take the bracket back off and um, drill these holes out to the right size. Um, obviously you can't do it because the bracket's, the bracket's in the way and I don't want to make the bracket holes bigger, so remove this now, undo these other 13mm bolts, we'll get that out of the way and then we'll re-drill the other holes. So that's a bracket out now. We'll go ahead and step these up to 14. I think they were, yeah, 14. Right here, we've got both holes drilled now. So the one on the bottom here, behind the shield, and the one up here on the side. So I'll go ahead now and I'll, um, I've got some, um, some paint, special paint to put on here to stop the rust and stuff, so I'll go ahead and I'll put that on now. 
and then we'll get the bracket back in and bolt the bracket back up, leave it semi-loose until we uh, probably get the truck back on the ground because um, it says to have this all, all this stuff loose until you get it on the, drink, on the ground and then to uh, tighten it up once the bars are in place. So we'll go ahead now and get all this up and then we'll move over to the, uh, the other side and get that side done. Go ahead now, I'll just nip all that up so it's just, just loose and then um, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Alright guys, so as you can see, this is now all bolted up and then there's those lines I was talking about before, just make sure you don't <laughs> drill into them. So this one just here comes, comes loose and then you just drop it back down. It's got a little slot in the bottom of that bracket too um, for that plastic clip to go back in so just make sure you don't drill through that. But this one's all in now. Um, I've got this traction bar just sitting there. So as I lower the vehicle, I'll put the wheels back on and then the suspension will take up and pull that traction bar further away from the vehicle. Um, we'll further away from this point just here. So once it does that, then um, I can uh, get the bolt in and then set them to where I want them. So we'll go ahead now and I'll drill the other side. I think that side should be a lot easier than this side because you don't have this fuel tank in the way with the bracket and everything. So I'll go ahead now and um, put this other one just here. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a lot easier to do that one. Just might be a pain to get your hand up there to do the uh, the nuts up. So righto, let's uh, get onto this side. So I've been reading the instructions for each each part, so make sure you uh, read the instructions for the next part. So that's what I'm going to do now. So. I'll figure out where this other bracket goes. So I've done that side. So it's telling me to pull these out. So I, don't, I think you guys can see that sticker there. It says no hook on the chassis. I don't know if that's just an Australian thing or went from shipping, but um, there's actually a, there's a hole behind that sticker. So that's where uh, that'll sit right there like that. So I've just got to Pull this sticker off and um, put that bolt through, and then we'll mark these other these other three yeah, three holes and get to drilling those. So <laughs> I thought this side would be easier, but it's it's not because of this fucking big piece of shit here. This DPF. So I'm gonna I can't get the nut on the other side of this big bolt, so I'm just gonna hold this in place while I um. Mark these centers. Like these are so much easier than trying to get a hammer. Bracket out now. Got our uh, holes marked. Alright, guys, we're all drilled now. We're all painted back up, and I've put the uh, the rust protection on as well. Stop those holes from rusting. Um, so yeah, now we'll get the uh, bracket back up in there and uh, get it bolted up. Um, probably just. I've, uh, I've tightened the other side because I can't see I, when you put it down I'm really not going to be able to get in there to um, tighten everything back up with the car on the ground it's just going to be way too hard so um, I'm just going to I'm just going to tighten everything up 
and then I'll take it down off the lift and I'll lift both bars up and see if they line up, whether I have to come up or down on the lift to adjust the bars to get them in the right spot. So, But these bars, they are on springs, so that's to stop them binding. So it doesn't matter if you're quite off a little bit um, with any, like you can't really be off because you've got factory holes here where they're telling you to drill via the mount to put your center holes and stuff. So everything should be fine and then you can adjust them. But yeah, having that spring and a free float design, that means that they can come in and out and, and they'll be fine. So right, we'll get this bracket bolted up and then we'll move on to the next part. So to get these on this bracket, because this stupid DPF's here, you've got to actually come up and over the back there and reach up and down. So you can't, unless you've got really small hands, you're not going to fit your hands up in between the, the exhaust in here to do up the nuts. So yeah, you'll have to reach over the top. All right, well, I was almost done and now I've lost the washer. So, I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, that bracket's in. She's all tight, so now we'll uh, let the vehicle down. And um, that way, once we let the vehicle down and the suspension comes up, these uh, track bars here, we'll then we should line back up with these holes here. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So we're just going to torque the wheels back up now. I'm just going to let it down. A little bit of pressure on the wheels, I've just nipped them up with the rail gun, put them down, put them back up to 160. Um, let's put down and then uh, we'll try and get these uh, traction bars on. Righto, guys, well, that's uh, one side in. Damn it. Righto guys, well I've got the uh, the back end all tightened up now. The front's all tightened up and I've used the um GM nut spanners to uh, measure out the side and I'm on the second setting uh, set for towing so and you just use these spanners to adjust down the back down there so got grease nipples and that I think I'll have to put doesn't didn't come with grease nipples up this end so I have to put something up there but um yeah so she's all in both sides are done Wait, let's go test it out. Alright guys, well there you have it. All done. So um yeah. Pretty sweet. I'll do a uh, review in a couple of weeks on what I think of them and yeah if you wanted to smash it you could probably do it with a buddy in probably two hours you'd have them on so anyway um, some more videos coming on the channel we've got uh, the general versus ranger so I'm gonna have a side-by-side -side comparison of the, the Polaris general versus the ranger kind of similar to what I did with the f-250 and the Ram 2500 so um, got that video coming and then also gonna do some spaces in the front of the Raptor so that video is coming too and then I'll have a vlog out this week as well with other things that are going on. Um, so yeah, righto guys. Um, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Catches.